and I love him and I just want I want my family to be proud of me and I just want Lucky to like think his mom's cool. My family is from Wellston, Ohio, which is in the county of Jackson. It's, it's like really close to, closer to West Virginia um, and kind of close to Kentucky. And it took me like a lot of time to kind of, you know, I would tour and I always made a promise while my mama was still alive. Um, if I was within three hours of home, I always went. And anytime I say I'm coming home, I always come home. Like I don't, I don't, I keep my promises, you know? And um, I can only go there for three days. One day coming in, a full day to ride four wheelers, play with all the babies, and the next day I'm out. But uh, I, I love going home and, and you have to appreciate where you come from. And um, it it just brings me so much joy. My I mean, my brother, as soon as he, as soon as he could, he moved back and my sister's there and we just have so much fun. And um, I, I don't, it's, in, it's just interesting the things that we push down um, that like, I think that we get in our own way of, I mean, the most out of anybody in our lives, right? And so it took me kind of a long time to come into my adulthood and realize that like I was fighting who I was. Maybe I didn't know who I was. And um, now I'm proud. My family are really hardworking people and um, they're great parents and they love me. And no matter what happens, whether I'm on the radio or like going through the, the worst year of my life and like a mess, they're always there for me. You know, they don't even, they don't even like take a beat. And, um, and so I love them. And I also feel like it's really important for me to share like the real parts of me, not the like, in my 20s, it was like the rock and the pop world. And I was like, New York, New York, New York, you know? Um, but people do have a misconception that I grew up in LA because my father is an actor and like, I spent most of my childhood in Ohio and then New York City. And so, I mean, I, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm glad that I have both, you know, because I, I think my, I'm glad that I've traveled all over, you know, my, both my parents for their work. Like I, I started traveling like to like Asia and everything when I was like eight years old. And I feel like that's a blessing, you know, cause I think that you just absorb so much and that's what I want to give to my kid. But, um, it's important for me to always remember where my family is from and where my family still is. Um, and that's where that's, that's home for me before you met me is like, that's a song that like gets stuck in my head and it it's just so fun. And I think about like my partner now and I, you know, I always joke and be like, you're lucky you met me when you did Bob. Cause I was, I was a wild one. And um, so I just thought that it was like, just interesting. Like, you know, Hey, this is me. I got nothing to prove, but you might not know this about me on Ohio and then a little bit more. So this is me um, in, this next chapter of life and I'm a mother and I'm, I'm okay with who I am. I am okay with how I look. I actually, I'm great with how I look. And, um, I've just recently, like, it was actually when I came into country music and I felt like, Oh my gosh, these people get me. And it's cause they reminded me of like, my family and like my brother and their friends. And I felt like I was really accepted and I could be more of myself and I could have so much fun. And this whole record is like more me and has been more like creatively expressive in such a, a wild way um, that was so like freeing because I was just myself. What's interesting about Try Jesus is that I also didn't write this song. This is the first record I've ever made where I put songs on it that I didn't write. And I heard it and I was like, this is country X's nose. Cause each stanza is about a different relationship. X's nose, I mean, those are true stories. But I also related to this so much. And um, I am a religious person and um, God came into my life in a very big way in the last year came back into my life, I will say, in a very, very, very big way. 
it was funny because I was talking to my manager and I was like, oh no, man, it's just weird. I, I'm like, I've been praying, I'm carrying around a Bible and I've been like studying and it just gives me so much peace. And we started, like, I remember being like 24 and like being around other people and watching like a, a group pray um, before they went on stage. And I was like, oh, give me a shot. And now I'm like, give me a shot and now let's pray. <laughs> and um, it's just really interesting how we rebel against things that are good for us. And, um, and so I had been kind of like redeveloping and, and deepening my roots in my faith. And, you know, my grandmother was Pentecostal and I grew up with people speaking in tongues and everything. And, um, it was a massive part of my childhood. I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter. I wasn't allowed to cuss. I, you know, I would, what, like, even my mom was like, if a Ouija board's on TV, she's like, uh, uh, no, no, no. And t change it, change it. Nope, nope. And if that's when her country comes out, she'll like really suppress her accent. She'll do her like New York City doula thing. But like once like if spooky shit starts happening, she's like, no, 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 no. And that's what my mom used to always say. No, no, no. If you'd come into the kitchen. And so Try Jesus got sent to me and I was like, holy crap. And it was just like, you know, like reaffirming that like, A, I'm on my path, my spiritual path and that God loves me and that this song came to me and I, I just connected with it. I was like, this is country X's nose. And then I changed one word and I, how's the course go? It's like, um, it used to be like, and maybe he's the only one for me. And I was, but I thought it was funny to say, baby, he's the only one for me. Cause it's like, well, I'm just going to date Jesus. Well, I wrote drunk with Martin Johnson. We did two days when I was about 24 years old. We wrote America's Sweetheart, which made my first record. And we wrote drunk, but I was really young and I was really green and I was really new in it. And uh, I didn't know that, um, I didn't know that my ideas were good. I knew my ideas were good, but I felt like, oh, like my strengths are like, I'm a verse girl, blah, blah. That song taught me so much because it didn't make the record. I didn't connect with the verses at the time. And fast, and then like over the eight year span from writing it and sitting on it and like, I just kept being like, dang, man, that like that chorus is freaking huge. But I just didn't connect with the verses. And then in this kind of new, you know, time of my life when I was kind of really like doing a lot of soul searching and everything and inviting, making, I, I, I always say you have to make room in your life for greatness. And, um, and it's true. You got to make room. You got to move shit out to get good shit in. Right. So out of the blue, Martin after like probably six or seven years of just, you know, doing separate things, he was like, Hey, like, will you, will you sing this duet on my record? And I was like, funny that you reach out to me. Yeah, I'll do that. I think that we should rewrite the verses to drunk. And so I was on tour with Miranda and then we'd come home on Sunday and I'd spend those few days writing and we wrote a whole bunch of songs and, um, it was just like a, it was just really fun. And it was, um, you know, I was getting a lot of stuff off my chest and we rewrote the verses in 15 minutes. And, um, and then the tour ended and, uh, I asked Miranda to sing on it, like terrifying <laughs> text to send because like we, uh, she became a real friend. She's a real friend, you know? And, um, I didn't want to be one of those people because I know how famous she is and I know how successful she is. And so I was really nervous to ask her to sing on the song. It was a pretty dang good song. Thank God it went to number one. It's like, if you're gonna ask a really famous friend to do something with you, you hope it does good, right? Um, and she liked the song. She didn't text me back for like 24 hours. And um, I told her, I was like, it, you know, if you'd want to sing on this with me, you're the only person I'm asking. If, if you don't do, if you don't want to sing on it with me, I, it won't be a duet. And um, she said yes, and we recorded it, and it was so much fun. We just got, I mean, we had a drink or two. <clears throat> and um, she's just a joy to be around. And so drunk, taking eight years and redoing that really just gave me the confirmation to know that I can do this. And then it, pretty, it did pretty good, that song did. So <laughs> when we wrote Lucky, I think it was the last song we wrote, we all cried because um, it's a beautiful sentiment, even if people don't know that that is my son's name. He's a blessing.
I mean, we named we named him Lucky because we feel like we got lucky, and um, that's all we've been crying. <laughs> and we put his little giggle in the end. It's really really sweet. And... I'm your mom. I'm your mom. I'm a pretty good singer. I like writing songs. I'm an okay banjo player, but the best job in the world that I have is being his mom. And uh, I dedicate the whole record to him because, oh, oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> Something just clicked in me. I was like, I gotta do better. And I wanna give everything in the world to him. And I feel like I, like he just, he pushed me. Something about it, he just is my greatest inspiration. And that's one of my favorite songs on the record. And it's just really sweet. We all like cried writing that song. Um, Cause it's just so sweet and I love him. And I just want, I want my family to be proud of me. And I just want Lucky to like think his mom's cool and know that I made this whole record, you know, like with him as my driving force. Because I feel like my whole life I, uh, I just like stumble at like the best things and, the, and my most successful things have been like, holy shit, no way. Like, we're always like laughing, like X's and O's, like, like <laughs> we wrote that so fast, like they're never even gonna put it on the record. It's like, uh, that's your single. So, what? That music video, <laughs> you know, we just never knew, never knew. Um, and so I feel like I just, I have a lot of blessings and I feel like I got really lucky and, um, yeah, of course I wanna be successful in life, but I've always wanted to be a mother. It's like the best thing in the world. And we, I don't know, he's just been a joy. And I, I laugh and I talk to Dan, like it's, I feel like people know, like I, <laughs> I drink a lot and I part, like I, I party hard and I used to party really hard. And um, it got me through a lot. It It just got me through a lot. And I laugh and I say like, Babe, when do I tell Lucky how I used to be before he reads it online? <laughs> At what age do you tell your kids you was bad? <laughs> you know? Keep it down, Daddy! Just kidding. That song, so like I said, this album came like real quick and we were just, we were just cutting songs. We were just cutting songs, cutting songs, cutting songs. And you just, you know, these people in Nashville, like, not only, is they expansive, they's busy too. So you don't have a lot of time. And we just try to get as many songs as we could. And Ross was like, I wrote this song and like Dirks had, um, Dirks had recorded it and was gonna put it on his record and it didn't make his record. And I was like, well, oh, thank God, let me swim and thank God. And uh, it's like, talk slow, L. It's just a fun song. And Ross wrote it and um, it was another excuse for me to be like, hey Dirks, you wanna sing a song with me? He's like, is it about drinking? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, you you recorded it. He's like, yeah, I know that song. I remember the words. He's like, I, thanks, bro. <laughs> Tulsa gets us so pumped um, that we already have it in the set, and people kind of go crazy for it. And I see, I see people pretending that they know the words. Like, I know you never even heard the song, but they like it so much that they're like trying to sing along to it. And like, I don't play an instrument on it on stage and I play the tambourine and like I'm not a good tambourine player but I just I just get that spirit in me you know what I love about Tulsa and I wanted to be really really specific about this because if your partner cheats on you in my case if my man cheats on me with a with some girl right yeah, you you bad, she bad, but I should be mad at him. You know what I'm saying? So it was really important to me because even though we're calling her a slut, and I say, babe, there's millions of Tulsas, he's always gonna find some slut. I also wanted to make sure that I said, it's not you I'm mad at, sis. And by the way, like, you know, you there's a million of you, you're gonna be, what, what's the, uh, Hun, you done me, like after I come back in, after like saying I threw out his shit and blah, 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 I was like, hun, you done me a favor and I ain't angry with you. Babe, there's millions of Tulsas and you'll be singing this soon. I hate to break it to you, but you're bound to find out. He's a real POS and he's your problem now. 
when it comes to stuff like that, if I'm going to be so bold to, to put in that I'm calling a girl a slut, I also want to make sure that I still stick up for my girls too. You know what I'm saying? Cause if, if, if somebody cheats on you, you can be pissed off. And if that person knows that this significant other got somebody like maybe they a hoe. Maybe they is, but I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, if you're going to call somebody a slut, you got to also stick up for them too in a weird way. I don't know. Cause I played it for my mom and it's, it's her favorite song on the record. And I had to show her, I said, mama, read it. Back. What's it say backwards? Mamie. And she goes, oh, that's funny. She loves it. So this song came to me, um, I, I really love bluegrass. I'm a banjo player, not a great one, but I play good enough. I play fast enough to be able to play, oh, she's all right. I am no expert. What is it? Like jack of all trades, master of none. Well, I'm, I'm like an eight of some things, you know, not even like a face card, maybe a six or a seven, but Charlie Worsham, um, oh, he's so sweet. And he's like a pro in bluegrass and he wrote that song and I love bluegrass. And so for me, um, this is where Ross and I really had a lot of fun because this was, this was in the phase two of like people sending me songs. I, Cause I said, send me songs written for men. And I heard that song and I was like, dang, that's some bluegrass shit. That's really cool. That's really hard. That's a song that like I would listen to and I get down to. And it reminded me, I don't know what it was and I don't, like, that's why Ross was so amazing because I would say, I want a hip hop beat, like 808. And so he was like, what? I was like, what? I was like, listen, just, just hear me out. And this is why me and Ross had so much fun. Cause I was like, this is bluegrass, but can't you hear like a hip hop beat under it? And he was like, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And so we just had a lot of fun with that. And so I combined two of my favorite things, which is bluegrass, three of my favorite things, bluegrass, a handsome guitar player singing harmonies and a hip hop beat under it. And I really enjoyed it. And I felt uh, really lucky that Charlie let me cut it. Cause I know that he's putting out his own music right now and he's so talented. And I was just like, let me have this one. Can I have this one? Please. Thank you. Um, and you know, it was really cool. I'm glad that I live here in Nashville now because I, I could be, you know, when people sent me songs, like I was like, Charlie, will you come sing the harmonies on it with me? And, um, it was just really, really fun. And he came in and sang and he was so sweet. Bonafide is funny. So that, that came from, uh, my, my little songwriting crew. And it, it was really interesting how they pitched it to me. Oh, we must've written Bonafide then Tulsa. Cause, oh no, 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 no. We wrote Tulsa, and then after I was like, all right, what's next, y'all? And um, Bobby was like, El, he's really, really sweet. And he was like, El, I came up with something today. I don't want you to take it the wrong way. I'm just gonna play it for you. And he starts playing the guitar, and it's like, um, I was always gonna end up on the wrong side of the track. I'm a blonde hair nutcase freak show certified damn maniac. And I'm like, what? And then the wheels up standard turning. But I swear the hamster died. You can bet your ass I'm crazy bona fide. And I was like, you wrote that about me? You, is that about me? And he said, mm-hmm. I was like, I love it. <laughs> And I was like, let's go. I was like, hell raising and high water. Tires down, gone flat. And, and I, for me, country is funny. And people, I think that funny is smart. I think you got to be kind, little intelligent to like, or you're just lucky. In my case, I ain't smart. I'm lucky. But, um, like you're the reason our kids are ugly. It's like, it's so good. It's so dumb that it's genius and it's so smart and it's so funny. It makes you laugh and it just like takes you out of life for a second and it's like relatable and it's just like, oh, but I love you anyways. You know, I don't need, I don't need nothing. Like let us have a bunch of little ugly little kids. And, um, it's just funny and I love stuff like that. And I, I use humor as a defense mechanism. It gets me through life. Me and my mom, we laugh 
at awkward times. We laugh when we're nervous and we make jokes through really uncomfortable periods and really hard things in our life. And it's just the way that we've gotten through it. And so I write, you know, I like to write funny stuff. And I, I appreciated that Bobby saw me in that way. And I feel like maybe other people would be like, that's mean. <laughs> Don't say that about me. And I was just like, dig in deeper. Let's go. Blacked out is like, that's one that I'm really excited to play live because it just has this feeling. And like, it's, it, it's, it's like, when I say hard, I mean like, oh, that's, it's like the same thing as like, that's hard. Like that, oh, that's bad. Not like bad. It's not like, it's not like, ooh, that's bad. It's like, Dang, that's awesome, you know, that's that's rad, you know, but I'm like, ooh, that's hard. It's cool. And like also I like to drink and um I like to drink a lot. I do. I like to I like to party. Have a good time all the time. Um and it's just like in that, it's another thing. It's like worth a shot, you know? So I bet you they met in a bar. So if it's if we're gonna give it one last shot, it's like, let's go to the bar, like get me back to where it started. And I always say, how it starts is how it ends, right? Um, sometimes if you met in a dark place, you're going to get out of a dark place. And you have to go through it to get over it, right? Um, so I feel like blacked out. Wow, I haven't listened to it in a minute. It's just funny. Because I have blacked out a tattoo of someone's name. But a lot of people got my name tattooed on them. <laughs> One guy did it twice. Out Yonder um, was a song that got sent to me. Um, and that was another song. So I was like, that was one of the few songs because a lot of songs got sent to me um, that were written like for girls. And um, I, I just, I'm not gonna put anything that I don't connect to, you know? I mean, hey, I'm getting out of my own way. A good song is a good song. And Out Yonder got sent to me and I heard it. <laughs> and the first two lines are, um, Who's doing lines? Who's huffing glue? And I was like, what the fuck is this? Who wrote this? And the rest of the song was like, this was written for me. Obviously Lucky is like so special to me, but like I, I do truly believe that um, Love Go By is the most beautiful song on the record. Cause it's just, A, I think it's real badass. Um, I love pedal steel, like just, you know, gets me going, turn me on, turn me loose. But um, that song was written, um, like, uh, you know, at the end of my divorce. And um, I'm, in a, I'm in a really, really happy and very healthy relationship. I don't know if he'd say that, but like, I feel fine. Um, and it's just interesting to like, think about love and loyalty and toxicity in a relationship and like, this is so bad and I'm also bad for you. And you're really bad for me, but I'm not gonna let you go because I don't want anyone else to have you. And it's like, it's selfish and it's selfless because I forgive you, but I want to hold on to you and I want to keep you stuck and you want the same thing for me. And um, I feel like people go through that and I just think that it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And um, I'm glad that I get to sing that song on the other side of where I was when it was written. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I just think it's beautiful. Uh -huh.